Thank you for choosing to join us online today. My name is Pastor Benny McDonald, and I'm so thankful that you made us a priority here online. Um, if you'd like to join us in person, we'd love to have you. You can join us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning worship service or on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have discipleship and we also have service here in the sanctuary. And the first Wednesday of every month, we have Triumph Life Groups. We meet house to house to celebrate together. It's an amazing, incredibly fun opportunity and a great way to share the gospel. So we look forward to seeing you however you choose to join us. Hey, this is Pastor Matthew Newton, letting you know that Wednesdays at the Church Triumphant are truly life-giving and designed for the whole family. We have our discipleship classes happening all across our campus. Our youth are upstairs in the chapel. Our kids are in classrooms. And Pastor Cisco is in the main sanctuary and giving us revelation that truly has the ability to change our life and transform us. So join us for Wednesday Night Recharge Wednesdays at 7 p.m. TCT family, thank you for joining us on the live stream. We are so excited about what God is going to do in your life. If you have a prayer request, put it in the comments. You can also fill out a connect card or give online through there. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you for choosing to join us online today. My name is Pastor Benny McDonald, and I'm so thankful that you made us a priority here online. Um, if you'd like to join us in person, we'd love to have you. You can join us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning worship service or on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have discipleship, and we also have service here in the sanctuary. And the first Wednesday of every month, we have Triumph Life Groups. We meet house to house to celebrate together it's an amazing, incredibly fun opportunity and a great way to share the gospel. So we look forward to seeing you however you choose to join us. Hey, this is Pastor Matthew Newton, letting you know that Wednesdays at the Church Triumphant are truly life-giving and designed for the whole family. We have our discipleship classes happening all across our campus. Our youth are upstairs in the chapel. Our kids are in classrooms. And Pastor Cisco is in the main sanctuary and giving us revelation that truly has the ability to change our life and transform us. So join us for Wednesday Night Recharge, Wednesdays at 7 p.m.
TCT family, thank you for joining us on the live stream. We are so excited about what God is gonna do in your life. If you have a prayer request, put it in the comments. You can also fill out a connect card or give online through there. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you for choosing to join us online today. My name is Pastor Benny McDonald, and I'm so thankful that you made us a priority here online. Um, if you'd like to join us in person, we'd love to have you. You can join us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning worship service, or on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have discipleship, and we also have service here in the sanctuary. And the first Wednesday of every month, we have Triumph Life Groups. We meet house to house to celebrate together, it's an amazing, incredibly fun opportunity and a great way to share the gospel. So we look forward to seeing you however you choose to join us. Hey, this is Pastor Matthew Newton letting you know that Wednesdays at the Church Triumphant are truly life-giving and designed for the whole family. We have our discipleship classes happening all across our campus. Our youth are upstairs in the chapel. Our kids are in classrooms. And Pastor Cisco is in the main sanctuary and giving us revelation that truly has the ability to change our life and transform us. So join us for Wednesday Night Recharge, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. TCT family, thank you for joining us on the live stream. We are so excited about what God is going to do in your life. If you have a prayer request, put it in the comments. You can also fill out a connect card or give online through there. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service.
Why don't we stand together, clap our hands to the Lord, and give him praise on this lovely Sunday morning, the first Sunday of March. Would you clap like you mean it? Would you clap like you know that Jesus is here? Now we're going to just ask for the fire of the Lord to come and to consume us today. We are making ourselves a living sacrifice. That's something that we continually do. And so what we do as we come into service is we bring ourselves and bring ourselves to the altar. Let's lift our hands, let's lift our voices, and let's pray today. Father, we come to you today and we ask you, oh God, to receive the sacrifice of praise. Receive the sacrifice of our very selves, our very lives, our very souls. Oh God, we present our bodies a living sacrifice unto you, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And now, Lord, baptize us fresh and new with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Oh God, pour out your Spirit upon everyone that's coming into this place. Draw them from the north and the south and the east and the west. Bring a clear and certain sound to us as your people today through the man of God and let every song Oh God, let, be, let it be something that you will get glory from. Everyone say in Jesus' name, let's worship.
in the house, hallelujah. Oh, give God one more hand clap of praise and you can return to your seats, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I'm so thankful for the God that I serve, a faithful God, a faithful God, a God who is continuing to show himself faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to welcome all of our first-time guests. Whether you are here in person or you're joining us here online for the first time, we welcome you. And let me say how honored we are that you have chosen to be with us today. And know that it's not a mistake, but you are here. You are here. And because you've been obedient, whatever you need in the house today, I know my God is going to show himself faithful. Amen. Now, if you are a first-time guest, we want to extend an invitation at the end of service to our guest center, our connect center. If you want to know more about the church triumphant, if you're interested in making the church triumphant your home, we would love to. Ooh, I'm out of breath. I'm so sorry. But we would love to connect and answer all your questions that you should have. Now, here at the Triumph, we stand on the truth. And that truth is the gospel of Acts 2.38. <laughs> Scripture says in Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them to repent and to be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What that tells me is I don't have to leave the same way that I came in. I don't have to leave the same way that I came in. Now if you are interested in being baptized, we have Brother Hernandez here. He will meet you. Amen. <laughs> We love Brother George. There's a sign over here to my left that says baptism is going to be on your right. If you are interested in being baptized, he will be the one that you will want to connect with. What's so great about being baptized is when you go down in the water, you come up a new creature in Christ. Amen? So thankful for that. Now, when you came in, you should have received one of our Connect cards. If you have not received one of those, if you'll just lift up your hand, we have our ushers coming up and down our um, altar, altar, excuse me, our uh, aisle, and they'll be more than happy to get one of those to you. And then if you will turn your attention to our screens, we have a short video. Thank you. Welcome to the Church Triumphant. We are so happy that you chose to be with us in service today. We would be honored if you would join us after service in the back of the sanctuary at our guest center. That's a place where you can find out more about us and, and we would love to find out more about you. At the Church Triumphant, it is our vision to honor God, love people, and transform the world. 
We, we strive to honor God every day through our actions, our attitudes, and the choices that we make. We strive to love people to the best that we can because we know that when we do, we will transform our world for Jesus Christ. Transformation, it's at the very heart of the gospel and it's in everything that we do here. However you came in today, you don't have to leave the same way. You can be transformed. We're so excited to have you with us. Thanks again for joining us at the Church Triumphant. Do you want to know more about the Church Triumphant? Well, guess what? You are invited to our Join the Family reception. At Join the Family, you have the opportunity to meet our pastoral team, ask questions over a breakfast, and find out who we are, what we offer, and how you can get involved. So sign up for our membership reception today. Join the family. The power of transformation is more than just a core value at the Church Triumphant. It's something that we live out every day. Just recently in September at Life Groups, we had a life that was transformed. She received deeper revelation on that Wednesday night that very next night she came and was baptized and now she is an active member at the Church Triumphant. We're not just seeing lives transformed, but we're also seeing healings and miracles and deeper relationships. And that's all happening house to house at Life Groups. So join Triumph Life Groups for a life transformed. You can sign up on the website or on the app. We can't wait to see you there. We'll see you at Triumph Life. Here at the Church Triumphant, we want to stay connected with you. And here's a great way through our Connect card. You should have received one when you walked in the door today. But if you didn't, if you'll raise your hand right now, our usher team is walking through the sanctuary and would love to give you one. You can open this up inside. It tells a little bit about what we believe and different ways that you can be involved at the Church Triumphant. The back has a note section, so you can take notes during our sermon today. There's also this great portion right here, the Connect card. This is how we get your up-to-date information, and we also receive your prayer requests, which our team will pray over every week. If you have no change in your address and you're not a first-time guest, then you can just write NC. Whenever it comes time for our portion of worship through offering and tithes, you can simply rip this off and drop it into the offering containers. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're a first-time guest at the Church Triumphant, thank you for being with us today. We're so honored you chose to worship here. We ask that you stop by our Cafe 1030 right off the foyer, where we have a special gift just for you. It's a short Bible study called Beyond Belief. It'll help you dig deeper in your faith and draw closer to God. We also invite you to choose a complimentary, delicious cup of coffee, a latte, or a fresh bakery item. We're so glad you're here. For more information, you can connect online at triumphtoday.org or you can download our church app. We pray you enjoy the rest of the service and welcome home. Hi, my name's Jennifer Davis and I'm getting ready to graduate the discipleship classes. Um, I've had an excellent experience. We have so many good teachers and facilitators. One of the things that you're gonna learn is you're gonna learn many things, but you're going to become a part of the church triumphant in a deeper, better way. You'll be connected. So I highly encourage you uh, to sign up as soon as you can. And once you begin, you'll want to complete each class and graduate. Discipleship class was awesome. We greatly were impacted, myself, my wife, we greatly enjoyed the connectivity, the open room discussion, and the text messages during the week. If you're looking to be connected with the body of Christ, make some friends, be accountable to somebody, take discipleship, your life will forever be blessed and changed. I really enjoyed D2 classes, getting to know Christ intimately and walking with Him closely. In the process of meeting new believers, it was a class well done. Um, I personally want to say that this has been such an amazing experience because um, we've come to know people on a different level. The teachers are amazing. We've been taught so good and they have broke things down about the Bible to us that really helped me to understand a lot of things I did not understand. 
Um, I definitely recommend if you're thinking about signing up for this class, you will not regret it. Sign up today, right now. Um, it's been such an amazing experience for my husband and myself, and um, we've met uh, amazing people. Um, so we like discipleship classes um, because what well, we've done it once before, uh, several years ago, and we enjoyed it. However, this time around it was different. Um, it just felt wholehearted and we grew um, as a family together, as individuals, and it definitely built up our faith. Um, it helped us just with the community prayer, um, the effectiveness that we felt, the love, and um, just different trials that came and we didn't waver because we had our accountability partners and the class itself, everyone was there for us. So we highly encourage everyone to take it um, whether it's your first time, whether it's your second or third, um, it's just a great experience. Praise the Lord, TCT. Praise the Lord. I tell you, I feel such a heavy presence of the Lord this morning. Obviously, we're doing something right. So, for those that don't know who I am, apart from my my precious wife, I'm Ron, and this is Emily Albritton. And uh, I'm supposed to be fast, but I don't know if I can be in this kind of atmosphere. But it's a great day to spend a few minutes talking about those videos. And I think we need to take a little time to do that, but I'll try to be quick. Discipleship is a huge part of our existence here. And probably... The only thing to top this would be godly worship. I've seen godly worship today. So the atmosphere is correct. So to be the one who knows who he is and know how to praise him to a point that the great I am hears us. And we can seek out anything we need, no matter what. And God's always looking at, through all this clatter that we have on earth. And he wants to be with us and desire to communicate with us. So let's give this thought a short moment to ponder. It should make us stop all things, clear our minds of any trivial matters of the day, this moment, milliseconds, and just say, hmm, because we need to do that. God so loved us enough, and I know Jamie did a great job with this, but it bears repeating that we could give our, he could give himself so we could have possible forgiveness and an everlasting life. No one else could do this, only God. So not only does God want to save us and love us, but he wants to communicate with us, and that's something we try to teach in discipleship classes, communicating with God. I know a lot of people and names and faces that don't want to see me much less than talk to me. So if God coming down to talk to me, I want to listen. So where am I going? Scriptures give us many examples of stories where Jesus stands at the door and knocks. The shepherd leaving the 99 to find the one. The two prodigal sons. Yes, there's two. One just never left home. And also the lost coin. And best of all, for the very lost soul of an old cowboy. So, how about you? Jesus is calling all of us. Will we answer the call? When we see the need of Jesus in our life, repent and turn away from wickedness that has wrecked our very existence, then we are prime subjects for a restart. Beginning with the physical washing away of the past and by declaring who is God. That's important. And receiving that blessed infilling of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus living with us. So stay with me a little bit. What next? I'm trying to hurry. He calls us to spread this good news. That's the good news. Now, if we look around and see all this world and we see it's up and down and wickedness abounds... In fact, that everything looks pretty grim right now. But wake up. 
Put on your spiritual glasses and look around and recognize the season in which we live. Take heart, for this is the best of times. And I don't want to miss the opportunity that God has placed on me and prepared me for and appointed me for a job. He has a task for each and every one of us. We aren't just a part of the body, but we are the body a group. And if not done correctly, we are out of sync. God for generations is trying to get us lined up in sync together. And that's what we try to do at discipleship. So it's not about you or me, but it's about the kingdom of God bringing in the harvest. Amen. Amen. So those who have never taken discipleship, um, you will find out that the classes can transform your life. It's what you commit and your faithfulness to it. And we've seen so many lives transformed. Um, but there's more good news. Today we are going to have some, um, some instructors that will be standing in the back of the sanctuary after church immediately. And you can sign up for our discipleship classes. We, um, if you've taken it before and you did not finish, you can finish. You can sign up where you left off. Um, also, uh, you can start a, a new level. We have D1 through D4 on Wednesday night, and that starts March 20th. And then on Sunday, we are starting our D3 class. For right now, we do, uh, on Sundays, we do D1 through D4. So, uh, that starts on the 24th. Um, also, let's see, we have, um... Four levels to journey of six classes. Each, each journey has six classes. Uh, and also, there's a good deal here. It's free. You get it free. You have child care free and you have refreshments free. And we all like free things these days. Um, for those who commit to the journey, it will positively change your life, as I just mentioned. Um, so now, let's give honor to those who have made the milestone markers on this journey. All right, we're going to start with our Discipleship One graduates. Dustin Anders. <laughs> Becca Cantu. Devin Casso. Linda Glenn. Guadalupe Herrera, Michael Herrera, Kayla Hutchins, Angel Laura, Crystal Meyer. Next we have John Meyer, Margaret Rudder, Brittany Salazar, and Emmett Salazar, right. Hannah Villanueva, TJ right. Wilcher, right. Lillian Wisniewski, right. Ronald Wright, and Tiffany Wright. Right. Your Discipleship One graduates, everybody. Get ready for D2. We're anxious to see you. Uh, as you can see, John and Kelly's not able to be here. Brother John just had knee replacement surgery, so we definitely missed him today. Discipleship 2 graduates, Gabby Serta. John Serta. Ricky Serta. Fernando Fonseca. Lisa Fonseca. Louis Mebelez, Soshi Mebelez, and Marcus Reyna. All right, and now for your Discipleship Three graduates Gloria Charles, 
Michelle Coates, Emily Gonzalez, Joe Hotry, Lexi Hotry, Karen Lopez, Stephen Lopez, Elisa Manley, Tony Manley, Kimberly Shea, Philip Shea, Winsome Shea, Greg Smith, and Priscilla Smith. All right. I'm going to tell you how wonderful this discipleship is. You, I, I see several faces here that actually take in the second, second round, maybe third round. Some people have fallen in love with it. So if you have not taken it, we want to see you here. Anyways, that was a little commercial right there. <laughs> All right, a wonderful discipleship for class. Woo, woo. Let's do this. Naomi Leos. Johnny Kelly. Where you at? Robert Kelly. Aracela Mendoza. Gonzalo Manuel Mendoza. And Lisa Smart. And these are our D4 graduates. Last but not least, Sunday, D2 class. Fidel Allman. Jennifer Allman. Jason Barron. Jennifer Barron. And Angelica Broussard, Lashad Broussard, Destiny Flores, James Flores Jr., and Asali Flores, Latane Gott, Brenda Haynes, and Contu. Don't ask me to say the rest of that name. <laughs> Teresa Kennard. Susie McDonald, Vima Perez, Lori Pond, Millie Scott, Noel Vasquez, Me Melody Wood, Diane Zamora, and Guadalupe Zarar. Let's give one big last round of applause for all of our students. We are so excited for their dedication and their faithfulness and in investing in themselves and in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We're excited for you. Make sure you keep going to the next levels, all right? Discipleship students, you can take your seats. Teachers, if you'll stay here just a moment. We want to say a very big thank you for all of our discipleship teachers. If we could just say thank you with a round of applause for them. Our discipleship teachers are incredibly faithful. They are teachers of the word and they're lovers of people. And the success of this program is because of them. And we thank them so much. Over the last 12 years, um, Kimberly and I have had the privilege of being lead pastors here, and my wife has been directly involved as long as we've had discipleship. She has been directly involved with discipleship, and she is feeling a transition to focus more on mentoring, ladies groups, and what are the other things that you're feeling? Mission one, and she's feeling some other things, but she really felt like this was a time for a transition, so I would like to stop just for a second and say thank you to her for all that she's done. <laughs> Would not be the same without our first lady overseeing this amazing, amazing culture that we have built of discipleship. So that asks us the question, well then what's going to happen next? We have very qualified people that are stepping into this. They were part of the writing process in the very beginning and that is Ryan and Diana Laughlin. They are going to be our discipleship coordinators. So we are excited, very, very excited. I'd like you, uh, discipleship teachers, if you would gather around them right now. And church, if you would just extend your hands, you don't have to stand, but if you would just extend your hands to them, we're just gonna pray a prayer over them and over this vital culture and process that we build in, of discipleship. Father, we thank you, Lord, today 
for Ryan and Diana and the future that they have, oh God, in your kingdom of building, oh God, disciples who make disciples, overseeing this program, overseeing this ministry, this vital commitment to the Great Commission. We pray in the name of Jesus that it would grow, that we would multiply, that the teachers would begin to take their next steps, oh God, that we would have more and more teachers and more and more students. Father, we thank you today for this new anointing. We, uh, we officially, oh God, today commission them for this calling in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. And again, thank you, discipleship. So I would like to have our Triumph Youth say HYC. HYC. Woo! How many of you are excited for HYC? Hallelujah. That's right, give a hand. Come on, young people. I need to feel some energy here, some excitement. Hallelujah. This is a life-changing opportunity for our young people here, for our Triumph Youth. This year, our South Texas Holiday Youth Convention is happening on March 28th. And 29th there will be three incredible life-changing services Thursday night Friday morning and Friday night and because this year it will be held at the Pentecostals of Katy in Katy <laughs> in order to avoid the problems with traffic and time and energy we have decided to stay for two nights at the best Western premiere less than 10 minutes away from the church we will return on Saturday morning the price for each student is $150. This does include everything. The hotel room, breakfast, lunch, dinner, Friday night's afterburner. Everything is included in this price. But because of different financial reasons, some families may not be able to, to be in a good position to send some of their children or their youth. So I am here asking for your help. For our TCT families, if you feel led in your heart today to sponsor one of our youth, to send them to this incredible, life-changing spiritual experience, whether it's for one of them, two, or even more, you may give today towards this cause with cash or card. If you're using cash, you can put it in an envelope, if there is one behind your seat, and just write HYC or other. If there is no envelope, please find Pastor Benny who is standing right now by the guest center at the back and he will help you find the, the, the envelope. If you're using card, again, you will find Pastor Benny and you will go to him during our offering portion. Please pray to God, ask him for direction. We would love for all of our youth to be a part of this experience. It's going to be incredible. The Spirit of God's going to move. It happens every time that we go. So why don't we just give God a big hand right now for the incredible youth that we have, for the hunger that they have for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right now for students, I believe we would probably need somewhere at least between five and ten that may need your help. That's what I know right now off the top of my head, but there may be more. We still have a month till then. So again, if you feel led, come find myself, Pastor Rita, or Pastor Benny, and we'll help you with more information about HYC. Now, I would like for everybody to say outreach. outreach. How many are excited that we can reach the world? That with the name of Jesus, lives can truly be transformed. And it starts right here in our city. Outreach is an incredible opportunity where we come together on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And we go and reach our neighbors right here. We go to these apartment complex. We put all these cards with invitation and information about the church triumphant and our services and times and prayer requests and all these incredible things. We just put it on the doorknob. So if you're afraid to go into someone's face and just begin a random conversation... You don't have to worry because here at Outreach on the Church Triumphant, we come together as a team. We won't be doing this by ourselves. And you will have bags with the invitations just to put on people's doorknobs. But the fruit of this 
is incredible. You will see people begin to walk into these doors on a Sunday and a Wednesday and get plugged in and get baptized in the name of Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit and now join discipleship program and become a part of the family of Christ. So on Saturday, mark your calendars, March 23rd before Easter, one week before Easter, we will come together from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This, we will, once again, we'll have even flyers for our Easter service. So if you would like to be a part of outreach, if you are available and you want to make a difference in this city, come find myself and Rita if you have any more information or questions. And we'll be excited to connect with you. And also we'll see you on March 23rd. I do want all of your attention. I'm just going to read one short verse in Jeremiah 3 and 15. The Lord was speaking to his people when he says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart. Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I know February just ended. But February marks a very important moment for the church triumphant. It marks the 12th year that pastors Jason and Kimberly Sisko have been with us here at the church triumphant. Are we not so blessed to have the greatest pastors in all the universe? Absolutely. Let's give them a big hand right now. And let's thank the Lord Jesus with a mighty shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for sending us these great pastors that are after your heart, Lord. Hallelujah. We have been so blessed by their ministry, by their hearts and giving, by the hearts of a servant that they have. And I know that myself, Pastor Kimberly and Pastor Jason Sisko, it's personal to me. Y'all invested in my life. You took me in as family, and it's changed my world forever. Thank you for showing me and showing us how it is possible to live that holy lifestyle that the Lord calls us to live, to be holy as he is holy. You set the bar for us, and you show us it can be done, and we love you for that. And let's give them another hand. Hallelujah. We couldn't give them enough applause. And to show our appreciation for you, Pastor Kimberly, if you would also come up, we have a little something for you, a little gift as a token of our appreciation. We love y'all. Thank you so much. We've had a lot happening in February. We um, just so many things going on, but it's an honor to serve. It's a privilege to see such amazing people that God has brought together. And uh, it is just a truly our, our honor to serve. We love each and every one of you. Thank you for your love and your support. And I'll tell you what makes it worth it for us is when we see your families walk through the doors. And we see your families getting baptized, receiving the Holy Ghost, joining discipleship, getting into Bible studies, and then bringing more families. That's what makes it worth it. We love you so much. Thank you for honoring us today. All right, let's stand up together. <clears throat> We're going to get ready to give. This is Mission Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. And we know that when we invest in the kingdom of God, we do it individually, do it as families, but we also do it as a church. And so missions is how our church participates as well in sending people around the world. So I believe that the more that we support the Great Commission, the more relevant God sees our church as being. And the more reason he has to bless us and to bless us with more. God will get it to us if he can get it through us. When the giving stops then the flow stops if my hand is closed i cannot receive so the same hand that i open to give is the same hand that i open to receive give and it shall be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over so we talk about the principle of giving as one of our core values is that when we sow sparingly we reap sparingly but when we sow abundantly we reap that much more abundantly so that's what missions is all about and of course we have a mission one initiative which is a large 
uh, goal of reaching our community in various different ways. And we're always excited to make progress in those things. In all of it, it takes financial uh, resources. And so we invest our temporary resources and we get eternal rewards. We cannot take our money with us to heaven, but we can take the souls that we win to Jesus. So we are truly investing in something that's eternal. We're getting ready for Easter. And we are excited about Easter. The Easter Passion Week is going to be great. It's going to be God, how he fills that gap between uh, the sin and his holiness, his righteousness. There is this big gap between us and God, and yet he decided we couldn't get there. We couldn't get to him, so he came to us. And that's really what the gospel is all about. We're going to be preaching and talking about that for uh, Passion Week. We'll also have, for those that are not at HYC, we'll have a Good Friday service. It's going to be a wonderful time of communion. And uh, we are building a tremendous week together. It's going to be uh, an awesome time. You don't want to miss out on this. But as we pray today, we are praying that God will help us to be effective in the Great Commission. How many believe we could have over a thousand people here on Easter Sunday? You believe we could do that? Last year I set the goal of 750 and we were at 861. So may God just bless us. I, I'm, I'm already thinking logistically where we're going to put all the people, but we're, we'll figure out. We'll figure out where we go. We'll put more kids upstairs. We'll put more chairs out. We'll do whatever we need to do. But we got to reach our city for Jesus. And we're going to win more and more of your family and your friends. So that's what, that's what it's all about as we give today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to give. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to invest in your kingdom and get eternal dividends. We pray that you bless the gift and the giver. We rebuke the devourer today. We take authority over every principality that would try to block the resources that you have promised us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are going to multiply, oh God, everything that is given just as the blessing was blessed over the bread. You bless the bread and you break it. You bless the fish and you break it. So we bless, oh God, what is being given today so that it will be multiplied. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as we bring our tithe into the storehouse, oh God, that the devourer is rebuked. We thank you, Lord, that the curse is lifted and that you multiply and move on our finances in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for giving today. Come and bring your Connect cards. You can come and bring your uh, your other uh, envelopes to the front if you want to give in the back you can give in the back of the car thank you so much you're gonna walk out here greet somebody on your way you back to your seat in, we like to make sure we give so we can get out of walk down free it's just the mention of his name just the mention of his name just the mention of his name everything can change everything can change you walked in heavy, you're gonna walk down light. If you walked in weary, you're gonna be alright. It's just a mention of his name, just a mention of his name, just a mention of his name.
his name. Somebody just whisper Jesus. Jesus. You know Jesus is alive because when you say his name, something happens. We are so blessed today to have Prophet Bobby Wade with us. He is also going to be with us next Sunday as well. We're going to have an all-star team next week with our worship arts having a special uh, guest coming to train and teach and impart. Kevin Howard going to be with us next week. There's going to be some special music next week. Invite a friend. It'll be great. And then Prophet Bobby Wade will be back to speak to us again. So we are so thankful for all of that. Brother Wade, come and deliver what the word of the Lord is. How many love this man of God? Amen. If you've never heard him before, just get ready. Uh, some people are 747s, take a while to get going. He's a helicopter. It's going to be boom, and we're off the ground. So come and do what you do. Amen. Everybody say, preach the word. And let's give the Lord all the praise that we can. Hallelujah. Well, that's pretty good, but let's give the Lord all the praise we can because he's worthy of the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I know that they say that the word hallelujah is the highest word for praise, but I would propose to you it is not merely the highest word for praise, it is the highest expression of praise. Oh, hallelujah. And you cannot say hallelujah and be still. And you cannot say hallelujah and be mediocre. And you cannot say hallelujah and just act like, well, it's just another day or another word. But if you're going to say hallelujah, you've got to get beside yourself and you've got to be exuberant about what you're doing. So somebody ought to give God some praise and you ought to give the Lord all that you can. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody that just made it out of something ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah, and I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord, Amen. and what a crowd we have here today. Amen. Praise God. Where are we going to put people for Easter? <laughs> well, I, I say it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to give honor to your pastor today. And I want to congratulate him and his wonderful family on 12 years of great, excellent apostolic leadership in this house. Hallelujah. And I concur with all the comments and honor. Uh, I have not known your pastor a long time. But um, he has provoked me uh, to more. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and I thank the Lord for that. Because I don't believe that we ought to desire to stay the same. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you desire to stay the same, if you're around people that want to cause you to stay the same you will not stay the same eventually you will digress <clears throat> hallelujah and so I thank the Lord for your pastor and his family and uh, and thank the Lord for his uh, impact on my life and I, I'm just glad about it and I'm honored to be here and uh, we're going to the word of the Lord. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter number 8. Hallelujah. The book of Acts, chapter number 8. 
and verse number 14. Praise God. Acts 8, 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 40. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Have you received since you believed? Have you received since you believed? No, look at them with a little more confidence and ask them. Some of us yell at our dogs louder than that. But look at them and say, have you received since you believed? Have you received since you believed? Jesus, we thank you for the power that comes from your word. We thank you today that there is no other force or power on the universe like your word, the power of the declared word. We ask you today that your word would become flesh today. We ask that the rhema would be loosed, that revelation and understanding would come to us, that the gift of faith would be loosed among us today. Father, every opposition I declare today will be brought down. All that which is resisting us will be brought down here today. And the people will be glad and they will go free from this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. We thank you for what you shall do and have done in Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord all the praise that you can one more time while you're being seated up. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's do that just a little bit more. I, I'm feeling something break up in the atmosphere here. Hallelujah. You can be seated uh, just for a moment. Do not get in the lazy boy mentality, whatever you do. We are living in very strategic times. Times that demand precision. Times that demand us to come out of operating randomly. And where we operate in extreme precision, where every step must count, where we are not just wandering along, but we are operating and functioning in the kingdom with great excellence and great, uh, as it were, we are not just wandering and meandering. 
I would like to tell some of you that if you're under a satanic attack, I'd like to help you understand that these attacks are not random. Well, hallelujah. These attacks are not random. In fact, I'd like to tell you that there are at least three reasons for a satanic attack. Can I go ahead and be me here today? I, I'd like to tell you there's at least three reasons for a satanic attack. Now, for all of you that are camping out by, you know, some palm trees and all that, this probably won't be for you. But for all of those that are going through a little bit of chaos, this is going to be for you here right now. Oh, praise the Lord. The first reason for a satanic attack, now this is not the only, but this is at least three. The first reason is that the enemy wants you to get offended at God. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. He wants you to get offended at God because when you get offended, you get quiet. When you get offended, you get quiet. Uh, he knows that when you get offended, you don't want, you're not going to want to pray. You're not going to want to be faithful to the things of God. You're not going to want to be involved in very much because uh, my goal is to get you quiet. Because once I get you quiet, now you're not going to be wanting to open your mouth to give God praise. And when you do not give God praise, there is no breaking forth that's going to happen. Uh, hallelujah. And so he said, I want you to get quiet because once you get offended, you're going to get quiet. And then you're not only going to just want to pray, you're not going to want to get around each other. You're not going to want to get around people that's got a testimony. Uh, hallelujah. You're not going to want to get around people that's got a testimony because, well, God, you could have stopped the chaos. You could have stopped the problem. You could have stopped the issue. Oh, just act like I'm not talking to you, but I know what I'm talking about. You're not going to want to be around people that have a testimony because, well, God, you could have stopped what was going on in my life, but did not stop it. Oh, hallelujah. I want to just talk to some folks in here that have done all the right things, but the situation didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Ah, hallelujah. I want to preach to somebody here today that's going through it, and you did all you could do right, but it still turned out wrong. It still didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. But I'd like to let hell know here today, I made up my mind no matter how it turned out, I was going, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to give God praise. This is not the time to be quiet. This is time to open your mouth. Oh, look at your neighbor and tell him it may get on your nerves, but I'm opening my mouth anyway. Uh, it may get on your nerves, but I'm opening my mouth anyway. Well, praise the Lord. The second reason for a satanic attack, uh, I hope you don't have a roast in the oven. It will burn here today, I promise. Uh, the second reason for a satanic attack is because the enemy knows I can't stop the blessing, but I want to spoil it. Uh, hallelujah. The enemy knows I can't stop it, but I want to spoil it. In other words, I don't, I know I'm not going to stop what God said concerning TCT. I know I'm not going to stop it. I know that what God said is forever settled. I know that I can't stop God's blessing. I can't stop what God said. I can't stop any of that. But I want to get you so frustrated that I spoil it so that once you get there, you can't enjoy Enjoy it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I wish I had somebody hear me. I said, I want to just mess you up so that once you get there, you're not going to enjoy the blessing. I want to mess you up so that so that once you get there, you'll be so frustrated. You'll see me so discombobulated that once you get there, I'm not going to be able to praise the Lord for the blessing because I'll be too wore out to enjoy it. I'll be, too, I'll, I'll be too wore out to enjoy it. Uh, and that's what the enemy is trying to do this hour. He's trying to put such a weariness on the people 
that they won't be able to enjoy. They'll not be able to enjoy what God's got planned. I can't stop it, so I want to spoil it. Oh, hallelujah. But the third reason for the attack is that you must understand that the enemy is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. But he is observant. Oh, help me, Jesus. He's not omniscient, but he is observant. In other words, he recognizes where God's hovering. He can recognize where God's hovering because hovering precedes declaration. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, I don't think you heard what I just said. Hovering precedes declaration. He knows if God is hovering somewhere that God's about ready to open his mouth and proclaim something over that house. God's getting ready to declare something over that church. God's getting ready to declare something over those people. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, the hovering is here. Where something is hovering over me. I can feel it. Something's hovering over me. The attack is because the enemy knows that God is hovering. Oh, hallelujah. About 10 more of you need to get on your feet and praise the Lord about that right there. Oh, hallelujah. Why are we fighting so hard? Why are we battling so hard? Why does it seem like it's a, we're fighting for every square inch? It's because the enemy can see where God's hovering. Well, Brother Wade, I don't know if that's in the Bible. Well, you hadn't read Genesis chapter 1 where the Bible said, Now the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered. The Spirit of God hovered. The Spirit, oh, it's dark in my house. It's dark in my family. It's dark around where my, what's going on. But I got news for you. There's a hovering and did a declaration. And God said, let there be. So I come to the TCT here in the first 15 minutes of this message to say, let there be light. Wherever there's darkness, let there be light. Wherever there's confusion, let there be order. Where and I'm so thankful that God's word, God's word, I can find myself in God's word. Hallelujah. I want to tell all of you wonderful discipleship graduates what you have been taught. Uh, what you have been taught is not some, it's not just uh, some lesson. You must be able to find yourself in the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful that the Word of God is not just a bunch of random stories. I'm thankful that the Word of God, I can find myself there. Some time ago, the Lord spoke to me about the cries of the end time. Uh, hallelujah. And the Lord alerted me to the book of Genesis 18. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is where we're going to go. The, the Lord alerted me to the book of Genesis chapter number 18. When the Bible says that Abraham is sitting in his tent in the heat of the day. And I'm glad that God put that in his Bible. Now, you, you must understand that God puts nothing randomly in his Bible. He doesn't put this randomly there because he didn't have nothing else to put in there. It wasn't like he had some blank space to fill in. So he said, well, I'll just try this out. Uh, hallelujah. Ma'am, this is going to help you today. Uh, this is going to help you. Because the Bible said he was sitting in his tent in the heat of the day. I'm so glad that God put it in his Bible that it was in the heat of the day. Because when I see that, then I know, well, he's not the only one that has ever been in the heat of the day. 
hallelujah he's sitting in the heat of the trial he's sitting in the heat of the moment he's sitting in the heat of the day he's sitting in the heat oh god he's sitting in the fiery trial it's hot in here it's heat in here I'm so glad God put that in his Bible because, and then the Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him in the heat of the day. Uh, that's the part that's important to me. It's not important that I'm just going through the heat. It's that the Lord appears in the heat of the day when I don't feel like I'm ever going to get out and I don't feel like I'm ever going to get an answer. He'll appear in the heat of the day. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anybody here going through the heat of the day? Oh, hallelujah. I said, is there anybody here going through the heat of the day? going through the heat of the day well I want you to be encouraged because the Bible said he appeared the Lord appeared in the heat of the day what bothers, what, what, what really gets me encouraged is uh, not only does he appear, but the Bible says that, it, that the word of God, uh, it, it implies that the Lord appears, but he's not up close. Oh, praise God. He appears just far enough out. For Abraham to see him. Praise the Lord. In other words, Abraham sees the Lord, but God is just far enough outside of outside where Abraham has to get up and pursue, even in the heat of the day. This is what I, this is really, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are. We are in the heat of the day. We can see God's handiwork, but it's just seemingly out of our reach sometimes. And God doesn't do that to tease us. God wants to know, is there an element of pursuit in you? Even in the midst of your pain. This church is, is bucking up against barriers. We can see God out there. We can see God's handiwork on the horizon. Oh, God, help me. Uh, we can see God's handiwork on the horizon, but God's saying to TCT, I, I know you've gone through a little pain, and I know you've gone through some heartache, but I want to know in the heat of the day, can you get up and pursue preaching to some people right now that the enemy said why don't you just quit it's too hot right now but oh you better hear what I'm saying oh I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now uh, God's saying get up in the heat of your day and pursue me and I'll show you something one more time give God some praise in this house Come on, you're not qualified to possess what you're not willing to pursue. You're not qualified to possess what you're not willing to pursue. I know it's hot where you are. I know it's a pain where you are. But God's saying, I've appeared to you. Now you must pursue me. Oh, one more time, give God some praise in this house. One more time, give God some praise in here. One more time, give God some praise in here. Oh, throw your hands in the air and pray in the Holy Ghost for just a moment. Ah. 
Nela hashaya la kotoya basandu ya la kata. Mataya la kashoya la katuya masatoya. I'm pursuing him. I'm pursuing him. I'm pursuing him. One more time, lift your voice to the Lord. <clears throat> in the heat of the day. Pursuit in the heat of the day. Reaching forth. The Lord said, because Abraham, you were in the heat of the moment. Here's what, here's what the word of the Lord says. Because you're in the, because he pursues in the heat of the day. He apprehends the Lord, and the Lord comes to his tent. And the attitude of Abraham is, is that even though I'm in the heat, I still have something to give. My God. Even in the midst of loss, I still have something to pour out. In the midst of my heart breaking, I have something to pour out. And the Bible says that he says to the Lord, and this is, this is something that I have pondered upon many times, but have not gotten an answer. But the Bible says he, he goes and he makes a meal for the Lord. And these two angels that are with him. And he says, I know I'm in the heat of my day, but I've got just enough. I've got just enough to prepare a meal. And he tells the house, it's, he tells the house, Get, make haste. Because when a window opens for a visitation, you can't just lag around. Hallelujah. When God opens up a door for a visitation, you can't just lag around. God told Israel for 250 years, you're coming out of Egypt. Oh, hallelujah. He told them for 250 years, you're coming out of here. But he only gave them one night to get out. I'm going to try that again. He only gave them one night to get out. Some of you, a door is open for your deliverance right now. now. I'm in the Holy Ghost. I'm not up here just talking now. The Lord has opened up a door for some of you to get out of that situation you're in. And the Lord has opened the door. And he's been telling you for a long time, I'm going to get you out of this depression. I'm going to get you out of this problem. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to get you out. God's been telling TCT for years and years and years and years what he's going to do right now. Now is the time to move on it. Now is not the time to get relaxed in what we've already accomplished. I, I'm going to 
going to try this one more time. Abraham was rich. Abraham had means. Abraham had all that. But there was something missing. There was something missing. And the Lord dealt with me. And I don't believe in lying on God. The Lord dealt with me and said to me, Bobby, there is a cry coming up in this end time. But it is coming to those that have been willing to pursue me in the heat of the day. When Abraham decided, I'm going to serve in the heat of the day. I'm going to pour out in the heat of the day. I'm Well, why would you be praising God anyway? You've had a promise for 25 years and it ain't came to pass yet. Oh, God help me. I, oh, you've had a promise for a long time and it still ain't came to pass. But my dear brother Newton, you hear what I'm going to tell you. When you pursue in the heat of the day, there's a declaration coming. There's a declaration coming. And God told Abraham what I'm going to tell TCT here today. There's a cry getting ready to come up in this tent. There's a cry getting ready to come up in this tent. It's the cry of what you've never birthed yet. Oh, somebody ought to praise the Lord in here right now. Oh, somebody ought to praise the Lord in here right now. I'm preaching to people that's been waiting on a prophecy. I'm preaching to people that's been waiting on a word to come to pass. I'm preaching to a church. God said to Abraham, there's a cry getting ready to come up in this tent. There's a cry getting ready to come up in here. And it's a cry of new growth. It's the cry of new birth. You ain't never heard this cry, Abraham. You ain't never heard this cry. But because you pursued me in the heat of the day, because you pursued me, not because you pursued buildings, not because you pursued heritage, not because you pursued any of that, but you pursued me. Ah, because he, the object of Abraham's affection wasn't the money. The object of his affection wasn't the camels. It wasn't all the servants. The object of his pursuit was the one that appeared in the heat of the day. How much time y'all got? Am I okay? What I see over TCT right now is what I see over this church. And what I hear is a new cry coming up. There's a new cry coming up. It's a cry of the end time. It's a cry. One of the cries of the end time is that you're going to hear the cry of something new. You're going to hear the cry of, of things that you haven't even birthed yet. My God. Oh, God. And God said, because of that, I'm going to cause new birth to happen. I understand that when we hear words from God, I understand that when we hear words from God, it's, I think sometimes we get on this wait and see list. You know what I'm talking about. Well, we'll just hide out and watch. Praise the Lord. You know, we'll receive the word, my brother. Uh, I like this word receive. This word receive is awesome to me. But, you know, you know, in our English language, we take the word receive and we think it to mean just one thing. 
in Acts 8, 14, could we pull this up for the beautiful people? Hallelujah. Thank God for technology and this media team. Uh, these folks that are operating the cameras, they're getting their work out in today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And they're getting exercise, so that means they can have extra dessert or something. <laughs> Acts 8, 14, if you don't mind. Praise the Lord. Now, now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, when the apostles, now let me pause here to tell you what God is, before I go into this, I, I, I just want to tell you, and the Lord just brought this to my remembrance. God, it, the Lord spoke to me while sitting on my couch, drinking a nice hot cup of coffee. Hallelujah. I, sorry if that doesn't work for you, but it worked for me. <laughs> while I'm sitting there drinking this nice cup of coffee, the Lord said to me, I'm getting ready to release a divine expediting upon my people. I said, now, Lord, I've never even heard this before, but just go ahead and fill me in. You know, when God asks you a question, it's not because he wants you to give him the answer. It's not like he doesn't have the answer. Oh, God, help me. It's not because he doesn't have the answer. He's inviting you into a conversation. And I love it when God does that. And so he says, I'm getting ready to release a divine expediting. I said, now, Lord, just fill me in. He said, you know, he said, uh, you know that it took Israel 40 years to go on an 11-day journey. I said, yes, that's correct. He said to me, but Bobby, the order is being reversed. I said, Lord, now what do you mean? He said to me, he said, Bobby, that which would take 40 years is now going to take 11 days. <laughs> TCT, it, it may have looked like it's going to happen 40 years, but God is saying to TCT, I'm going to do in 11 days what would take 40 years to accomplish. There's a divine expediting. There's a divine expediting. I don't know how long you've been praying for that family member. It may have been years and years and years and years, but God's gonna do in one moment what I've been waiting 25 years for them to come home. I've been waiting 25 years, but God said, I can do in one night what would take 25 years. Oh, somebody better praise the Lord in here. Okay. Uh, TCT. You've been waiting for what you're seeing right now for years and years and years and years. And God is doing it a matter of months. God's doing it. A, but I got news for you. You better get ready because that what you've been preparing to take months is going to take weeks. And that what you've been preparing to take weeks is only going to take days. Oh, God. I might get to Acts in a minute, but I'm going to tell you all right now. My brother, my brother had a $9,000 a month crystal meth habit. My natural born brother had, had a $9,000 a month crystal meth habit. And God delivered him on. in one night. And if God can deliver my brother in one night, he can bring your family out in a matter of hours. He, hey, I feel the gift of faith stirring in here right now. I said what God did in just a matter of, what, 
what we had been praying for, what we had been fasting for for years, God did in one night's time. I don't know about you, but I'm believing for some 24 hour turnarounds in this house. One night, God sent, my brother was homeless. My brother was living in a tent. When a tornado come through, picked his tent up and threw it in a tree. Talk about a wake up call. Oh, Jesus. Talk about a wake up call. God threw that tent up in the tree. My brother barely made out alive. Got the tent out of the tree, shook the water out, and went to sleep. And got up the next morning and said, I'm not going back to Crystal Meth another day. God instantly delivered that. I'm preaching to people that's been pursuing and pursuing and pushing in the heat of the day. Somebody just make a declaration and say, that's coming to my house. 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 That's coming to my family. danger and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close my God I'm sorry for going so long here's the danger Acts 8 14 that when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received give me verse number 15 Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive. Now those two words are spelled the same, but they are not the same. The word receive in, the, in verse 14 is the, re, is the Greek word dekomai, which means to accept. Okay. It means to accept. It means I believe what you're saying and I'm accepting what you're saying. But it's not the same as verse 15. The Greek word for receive in verse 15 is the word lambano, which means to lay hold on what you have accepted. TCT, it's not enough just to say I accept it. Somebody's got to lay hold on it. Somebody's got to possess it. TCT, we can clap our hands and say I accept that. That's a nice word. But until you get up and lambano. If I had the time, I'd talk to you about the prophet's reward. Have I, have I used up my, my runway? If I had time, I'd talk to you about the prophet's reward. Well, praise the Lord. Y'all told me you want me to go on. If you don't like it, it's your fault. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell them I'm out to lambano something. 
Hallelujah. I'm about to lambano something. I'm about to lambano. I decomide, but now I'm going to lambano. And so the Lord says in the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, uh, I don't care what you got to say, Apple Watch. I'm in a hot, red hot environment, and if it gets loud, that's just the way it is. But the Lord says in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, he says, he says these words, he that receiveth a prophet, he that decomize a prophet lambanos a prophet's reward he that oh God he that decomize a prophet lambanos a prophet's reward Now, you must understand something about this prophet's reward. It's not the reward I get. Praise the Lord. Oh, listen to me. That reward is not mine. It's yours. Because you have accepted, because you have decomide, there is a lambanoing that is getting ready to take place. Ah, so... So my problem is, I must now know what is the prophet's reward. Well, it's not, ladies and gentlemen, a new Cadillac. The first reward of the prophet is something that money cannot buy. The first reward is something that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy you peace. Money cannot buy you a breakthrough. Money is not going to buy you the joy of the Lord. Money is not going to buy your kids being saved. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody better lambano that right now. I want you to hear me. The Shunammite woman had a need that money could not buy. But when Elisha came by, she decomied. She decomied. She recognized and accepted that he was a prophet and built a room onto the house. And when she did, she lambanoed that which money could not buy. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor time. We're going to make some room around here. Uh, we're going to make some room. 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 Twelve years ago, a prophet came to this church. Uh, Twelve years ago, a prophet came to this church and is standing in this church. Him and his wife are standing here right now. You deco my that he was a prophet. But now you're lambadoing something that money could not buy. In 12 years, you've seen something that money could not buy. Oh, I wish I had somebody help me. Oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. What is the second reward of the prophet? The second reward is the reward of provision. Hallelujah. The reward of provision. The reward of provision. The prophet went to the woman at Zarephath and said, if you'll make me a cake first. He said, she decomide. And then she lambanoed. Because he said, if you'll make a cake for, for me first. He said, the meal won't go out. And the oil is not going to go out. A release of divine provision. TCT, divine provisions coming. Now, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The third reward of the prophet is the reward of posterity. Oh, God. The reward of posterity. In other words, it's generational continuity. 
there's generational continuity for the promises unto you and to your children. Hello, somebody. Somebody ought to lambano that right now. Somebody ought to lambano your great grandchildren. You ought to lambano mo shoto la makara la masoyala. The Bible says that the creditor was coming out to the woman's children and she went to the prophet. And when she went to the prophet, the prophet said, what do you got in your house? She said, all I got is this little cruise of oil. He said, well, that's enough to get generational continuity. When she lambonoed, she saved her family. Somebody ought to give God a 10-second praise break right there. Why are you being faithful? Why are you coming to the house of God? Why are you coming to prayer meeting? It's because I'm getting a generational continuity. Okay, the fourth reward of the prophet is the reward of new beginnings. Well, praise the Lord. Behold, the former things have come to pass and new things I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Behold, I do a new thing. We're getting ready to see things we've never seen before. Oh, hallelujah. Number five, number five, the fifth reward is the reward of breakthrough. Okay. Breakthrough. Breakthrough in areas you've never had breakthrough before. Giants that have been standing there for years are coming down. Okay. Number six, the reward of opportunity and favor. It's coming on this house. It's here now. Well, praise the Lord. Just because you got opposition doesn't mean there's not an open door. In fact, the more opposition you have, the more of a clue it is that there is an open door before you. You must go through it. You must not go back. You must not turn around. You must go on through the door. Behold, there is an open and effectual door unto me, but there are many adversaries. Number seven is the reward that heaven will fight for you. There are angelic armies on this property. There are angelic hosts on this property. And they're not here just to stand around and roast marshmallows and drink hot chocolate. They're here to do the bidding of the word of God and God's word says we're possessing the land My God. God's releasing his angelic armies to fight on your behalf you can expect, you can expect doors of favor to open. You can expect promotion. You can expect it. Okay. Some of y'all just deco that. 
But somebody's going to lamb on that. The eighth reward of the prophet, the eighth reward, the eighth reward is authority over the nations. 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 To root up, to tear down, to throw down, to build, to plant, to destroy. And you don't have to get on a plane to do it. God has strategically positioned us. My God. God has strategically positioned us in a melting pot of ethnicities. Okay. God has put us in the melting pot of ethnicities. So that every kindred and nation and tongue can be affected from right here. This morning, and I don't know why, Brother Cisco, I don't know why, but while we was in the prayer room, the Lord alerted me to the nation of Croatia. I mean, just out of the blue. The Lord brought to me the nation of Croatia and, and the Balkans. And I'm going to tell you right now, it may look like right now that there's some polar ice cap over that part of the world, but I got news for you. There is a word that's going to go forth. Something is going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be an earthquake. I don't know if it's going to be a storm. I don't know if it's going to be a shaking. But God's going to bring the pride down. And it's going to open the door. for. Pray, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. If you don't mind. My God. <sighs> Father, I exercise authority and dominion now over every sickness and disease in this building. I exercise authority and dominion now over every infirmity in this building right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it now and I cast it out of the bodies of these people. In the name of Jesus, some of them that have had nagging infirmities, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. And I loose the working of miracles upon you now. Open up your mouth and begin to thank the Lord for the miracle. I curse every autoimmune disease in this building right now in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity that has been brought on by nerves, by anxieties. I lose the restoration of gut health in this house.
Go ahead and land Bono that right now. Every bit of macular degeneration, I curse it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I loose miracle power. The Lord just brought to me, the Lord just dropped on me about these nagging infirmities that has, that has been a constant thorn in the side of many of you. Huh. I call an end to it today. I call an end to it today. I declare an end to it today. Those of you who have been troubled in the night, those of you that have been troubled in the night, and you have received a message from the spirit of fear, and has kept you up, and has tormented your mind, and has made you believe that something bad is coming to you, I curse that now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I sever that from you right now. I say it is a lie. It will not come to you. In fact, you're going home tonight. In fact, you're going home today and you're telling the spirit of fear to get out of your house. It's time, you're being evicted right now. You're being evicted right now. Getting ready to go. I'm going to turn to your pastor. My God. My God. I had a friend of mine come to me. Come to me. He said to me. He said I had a man come up to me, and he's in his forties. He said. The Lord, he said, this man came up to him and said, the Lord is going to take you early. When I heard it, my brother, I say this in the nicest way possible. When I heard it, I instantly got angry. And I said to my friend, who's got a beautiful family, a nice man, got a great church. I said to him, the Lord did not say that. He goes, what? I said, the Lord did not say that. Now I know this sounds arrogant, please forgive me. He goes, well, how do you know he didn't say that? I said, because that's not what God said to me concerning you God said to me and the devil's been lying to some of you telling you you're going to go before your time that something tragic is going to happen to you but I cancel that right now in the name of Jesus that is a lie that is not what's going to happen you're going to flourish you're going to prosper you're going to have breakthrough if you believe that, you ought to give the Lord all the praise you can right now. Come on, let's clap one more time to the Lord and give him praise for this word today. Woo. Hallelujah. Someone probably thought, Somebody thought we're getting a bunch of Lamborghinis. We're getting Lambos, but no. 
This is a Greek word. We're lambano something. We're, we're laying a hold of some things today. Hallelujah. But I do think you can drive it home. I think you can carry it home with you today. I think you don't have to leave it here. It's not just for this altar service. God wants you to lay hold upon these things. I want you to lift your hands one more time. We're just going to seal this word together. Father, we thank you for everything that we have heard today. We thank you that you are walking to us in the cool of our day, in the heat of our day. You are working with us at every part, oh God, whether we are, whether we are in the trial or coming out of the trial. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can have this reward that is waiting on us if we will but receive what you are saying and doing. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. I want you to linger around these altars as long as you want. We're going to sing one song here today. But I love you. God bless you. It's going to be an awesome week. Stay and rejoice if you like. If you need to go, God bless you.